few farm level uh, pre-chillers and uh, happy to say that in 95, we set up um, uh, vacuum pre-chiller for iceberg lettuce in India in Pune. Now Uti also has one and uh, I think Pune has another one. So, and with that, we have some 6,500 uh, cold store available and primarily to store potatoes and 65% of them in uh, West Bengal and uh, um, Uttar Pradesh. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, today, uh, uh, and also, uh, we have 36% of the cold stores are just below 1,000 metric tons capacities. It means we have great opportunities. And uh, the cold chain industry is valued at uh, 13 to 15 billion US dollars today. That's a good, good shift, right? Having said this, there are a couple of industry segments, food service and organized retail have driven modern integrated cold chain requirements. And as I said, I'm happy to say that I was part of these two. And uh, with this, we will discuss metric tons to pallets, moving from cold storage to cold chain, the way forward, and the challenges associated with this. To, to, to contribute the views, we have four eminent panelists, and uh, Mr. Vikas Obatyai. Uh, he has over two decades of uh, exposure in business leadership roles across commercial refrigeration, air conditioning, automobiles, consumer durables industries. Currently, he leads carrier corporations as associated, associate segment marketing head for Asia division. Then we have Mr. Gansham Singh. He, is, uh, uh, he has 16 years of uh, experience in supply chain management, logistics, purchase, and operations. Currently, he is the deputy general manager and head of ACM for Ritz Graves uh, Products Private Limited based out of Pune. And earlier, he worked with um, Walmart, Daban, RK Foodland, Vissal Retail, and Adidas. Then we have Mr. Samir Verma from Tuscan Ventures. Uh, Samir has um, uh, 15 years of career experience, and he is the part of the uh, founding team of Tuscan Ventures, where he spent nine years in um, investing and uh, operating roles in logistics uh, sectors. He is instrumental in building Cold Star Logistics, which is part of Tuscan Ventures. And we have Mr. Shiva Prakash um, from a TCI Supply Chain Solutions. And he is the cold chain, um, uh, he heads the cold chain uh, department in TCI. Um, uh, part of Transport Corporation of India Group. He has over 20 years of experience with the TCI in the areas of fleet management, operations, business development, cold chain management. He also automobile, uh, engineering and postgraduate in logistics and supply chain management from XLRA. Yeah. So now, moving to the discussion part, um, uh, this question um, uh, to Mr. Vikas. Uh, uh, do you think our market is getting mature to have more multipurpose cold chain to make spurt in consumption demand? Currently, if you see the consumption demand is like really, really, uh, uh, you know, uh, outpassing the earlier. Uh, growth levels now, especially you know, if you look at a dairy, which is growing more than um, 10%, and fruits and vegetables in the region of like 12%, and frozen food and meat is in the region of 22%. So, what's your view on this, please? Yeah. Well, good morning, and uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Cold chain in India has been evolving, but uh, we always say there is a lot of uh, development happening in cold chain, but we don't see that on the ground. So having said that, if we talk, talk in terms of numbers, which are available in the public domain, the total production capacity, cap total production is about, uh, for horticulture, for example, is about, uh, about 280 mil million tons. That's, that's the capacity. And the capacity of cold storage is very less. It's about 15 to 20%. That's it. Yeah, you're correct. 30 million metric tons, yes. Please. Correct? Yeah. So basically, there is a lot of gap between what is produced and what goes to the cold chain. That's number one. Having said that, there is a lot of preference for fresh food. So basically, a housewife will always go to a market to buy fresh vegetables. The preference is for fresh vegetables as compared to going to a supermarket and buying something from the display case. Right? So this is the lifestyle which, is, which has been prevalent. But today, 
with, uh, I would say, urbanization, 100 smart cities projects. There's a lot of shift or paradigm shift, I would say. There's a lot of paradigm shift, shift in lifestyles. So consumption pattern is changing. And uh, though it is not enough as of now, but consumption pattern is changing. And that definitely will help growth in the cold chain industry. Um, Mr. Ganshyam, since you handle part of retail uh, supply chain management, what's your thought on this? Uh, first of all, uh, good afternoon to everyone. Am I audible? Yeah. Okay. So, I'll tell you from uh, starting when I was a kid, I was going to school. For At that time, uh, for me, cold chain was the cold store. I, I, actually, I'm basically from UP. So, UP is a hub for potato storage. When I grow up, I came to know cold chain is not just cold storage, it is something else. Uh, if we see the total uh, perishable production of India, it is almost 400 million metric ton, including poultry, including fish, including meats. But the availability of cold storage is 31 million metric ton, which is, which is way low, uh, low against the demand. Now, the scenario is changing. Now, people are more focused on quality, more focused on the consistency of product. Uh, middle uh, middle uh, uh, age of people is now 35 years, so they are more on a healthy foods. So, checking the quality and uh, consistency of a product. Earlier, there was no detail shop. Now, there are n number of retail shop. People prefer to buy from a retail chain like more Walmart or uh, like uh, kind of uh, retail chain. So the demand of cold chain is increasing now. So I think uh, in coming years or existingly also, the demand of cold chain is much, much higher, but the supply is too low. Per, cap uh, per capita production is too high, but uh, we are not able to get the desired quantity. Reason is spoilage is too high. So in coming years, we will see definitely the cold storage demand will increase to cater the supply of a market and to control the wastages in a market. Okay. Uh, to, to add uh, uh, my view here in this particular question, uh, uh, since I was part of the retail industry, uh, people had taken uh, more of work towards back-end operations. Right, first time in a bigger way, when we opened the hypermarkets in Reliance Retail, we ensured that minimum two-ton metric ton capacity freezer rooms were built. Right? And with that, we had put almost 80 running feet uh, freezers, open door and closed door freezers, which really helped us to see uh, consumption demand and, you know, so going up further. So, right? So the customers are ready to, you know, pick up the product, provided you give them right infrastructure in display and also um, uh, 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 the uh, product range. Yeah, thank you. Now. Uh, the in relevant to this, uh, uh, Mr. Shoprakas, does our government is helping to uh, build such cold chains, including reform movements across the country? What's your experience and views? Good afternoon. Uh, to your question specifically, yes. It's already been touched upon in the morning by Mr. Ranjan and uh, later on Mr. Binai that uh, government is uh, giving the grant and of course they uh, sanctioned the projects of 101 cold storages recently, last month only the uh, news has come and uh, it's uh, spread across uh, 20 odd states and uh, another 50 more projects uh, they are going to sanction. So definitely government is go going to uh, support on this uh, development of uh, cold chain uh, infrastructure in India. It, it, it may be either in the cold storages or factors or in the refrigerated transportation, refer trucks. So uh, we see a lot of focus being uh, given to the cold chain industry as such. Considering the wastage of food in India, the government is uh, focusing on that. And uh, it's a good uh, move by the government. And uh, we hope that uh, we can able to utilize that for the betterment of uh, our uh, Indian uh, economy. That's good. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Vikas, 
do you see some section of the processing industries in our country increase to move away from tonnage to pallets loads, both in primary and secondary uh, logistics? So basically, last mile uh, delivery has always been a challenge. But with the spurt in e-commerce, uh, recently, DMART actually, the company called DMART, Avenue Supermarkets, they have announced uh, delivery within one hour, 60-minute delivery. So basically, a lot of novel, innovative ideas are coming up. And uh, uh, about a couple of months back, I was in China. And I actually happened to, uh, you know, uh, hear an idea which is which was innovative, which is a refrigerated box, like you ex like for example a pizza hut. You know, you have a pizza, and there is a indicator of it being hot, and if it is not hot, it is served free, right? So pizza hut has actually come with that guarantee. Domino's like they had 30 minutes guarantee. Pizza hut has actually a indicator of the pizza being hot. So basically, similarly in China, they have come up with a uh, you know delivery, for example, on a motorcycle, and there is a refrigerated uh, box, which will actually uh, you know have a product which actually has to go through cold chain. So there are a lot of such new products. I mean, in the morning there was a lot of discussion whether last mile uh, you know delivery is being taken care of or whether there is a shift paradigm shift, and whether we have the technology for that. So yes, last mile delivery definitely is a problem. And uh, I was also, I'm also on the panel of Wellington Institute of Management, where you know we have done multiple projects. And uh, we have been discussing, you know, today as uh, uh, Samir mentioned, that uh, there is a lot of focus on healthy, being healthy, right? So whether we should have, uh, we, we have come up with a novel idea, we can have a fruit teller machine, FTM at airports, at railway stations. Suppose someone is hungry and you want, do you, uh, some, the person who really is health conscious, whether he'll go uh, and have a burger or he will prefer to have an apple. But it, the apple has to be the right quality, the right refrigeration and, uh, you know, the, it has to ensure that it has go through the right cold chain. So basically these are the concepts which are going and to answer this question specifically, whether from metric tons to pallets, the food processing industry is going. Yes, definitely it is going from metric tons to pallets, pallet addition. And last mile deliveries, there are a lot of innovative uh, solutions which are coming up. Okay, thank you. And uh, this question goes to uh, Mr. Samir. Uh, do you think our food market demand is ready to handle pallet load uh, capacities? So let me just draw you back um, for, for a quick second, right? So our, our understanding of cold chain usually depends on which part of it you're really looking at. But let me just sort of break it down for you. So it's essentially post-harvest processing, mother warehouse, and then the last mile piece, essentially. Um, the growth in food retail, essentially, um, has led to a couple of things. One is that there is significant market linkages from the post-harvest all the way down to the time you and I essentially consume the product. And as demand has sort of grown out uh, and linkages have sort of grown out, more efficient methods of actually transporting the product from the farm level towards you and me as consumers has sort of grown out over the past five to ten years. What we've actually seen is that at post-harvest as well as pre-production centers, metric ton storage units continue to sort of increase. As soon as some value addition actually happens, whether it's cleaned up, you know, washed, waxed, um, you know, packaged, cut, chopped, that's when the need for palletization has actually happened. And if you look at the entire geography in the country right now, and I think we've touched upon the number of cold storages and metric tons which are available versus uh, the gap really, uh, you'll find that at consumption centers, um, you'll find the predominant number of palletized storages available. And this in turn is linked with food retail actually pulling uh, or requiring operators to actually build out more efficient uh, storage distribution uh, processes or platforms. And, and let me just leave it at that. Uh, because cold storage, distribution, last mile, you know, re-handling, double handling, break bulking, all of that happens here. And as the likes of McDonald's and the likes of, you know, Indian QSR and Indian restaurants actually grow out, um, you will find that more and more consumption centers, uh, which are not probably metros only, but tier two, tier one cities, will start having larger and larger palletized storage or palletized units in, in, in the country. And that's a trend that we've actually seen uh, since the time we've been looking and tracking the cold chain environment uh, in India for the past uh, eight years, I'd like to say. 
And if you just draw a simple parallel with what's happened in Southeast Asia or China or you know any other country, I think we are at that inflection point. Um, that uh, processing, uh, um, growth in food processing, growth in uh, uh, retail, growth in uh, consumer behavior, as well as food retail, has actually is pulling people to start looking at investing in uh, palletized storage and distribution platforms as we speak right now. Scott, thank you. And uh, since you mentioned palletization uh, is happening um, at some extent, and what percentage in the total load uh, do you think it is happening? And what are the enablers to increase that further? So the macro level uh, views are can be debatable, right? So we know that about 300 million or 280 million tons is produced in the country. And let's look at horticulture or um, or, or likes thereof. You've got about 29 to 30 met metric, uh, million metric tons of storage which is available right now. I think our sense is that if you um, just add the big four, big five consumption, big four consumption centers, I think which have palletized storage available, I, th I think they would necessarily make not more than about 1 to 2 percent of the total market. Um, and we've seen growth happen rapidly, uh, but rapidly because the base five, six years back or 10 years back is very small. Let me just give you a small example of the Bombay market. Uh, when we started looking at the Bombay market back in 2008, 2009, I think we could count close to about, you know, it's again, don't hold me on this, but about 12,000 or 13,000 pallet positions available in Bombay at that point of time. That number today, um, I think give or take and uh, Pardon me if I'm a, I'm a little off, but it's about 70,000 to 80,000 pallet positions right now. Uh, 